The sequence you see here is a 2 hour continuous recording that was created with the Canon EOS R5 in 4K fine without overheating. To achieve this shot I was using the Atomos Ninja 5 and today I'm going to show you which settings you need to check on the Canon EOS R5 and the Atomos Ninja 5 to get the highest possible image quality out of this combination and also what other settings you need to look out for. What up guys, welcome back to our episode, my name is Eddie Bear and there are two reasons why I'm doing today's video. Number one, Atomos introduced a new feature called Legalize which impacts the way we can record log footage and this affects not only Canon cameras. So I hope you Sony and Nikon fanboys are listening cause this one is affecting you in a massive way too, so stay tuned. Number two, Canon did not a stellar job documenting how to properly record externally with the EOS R5 and how the different settings can impact recording quality, so instead I'm going to show you which settings you need to watch out for and how they affect your recording. By the way, there are three very good reasons why you should record externally. Number one, there's no difference in terms of image quality between the internal and external recordings. Number two, you can record for hours without recording limits or overheating. Remember in the intro I recorded for almost 2 hours with just the power of one LPE6 battery. Number 3, you are not relying on super expensive CF Express cards anymore, you can work with SSDs instead which are not only inexpensive but also easy to handle. By the way, did you notice that I forgot my fill light that is sitting right over there? Looks way better, doesn't it? So let's get back to topic. Just to put things in perspective for you, a 512GB CF Express card plus a Thunderbolt 3 card reader which truly leverages the high read and write speeds of a high-end CF Express card costs you around 740 euros. The Atomos Ninja 5 with a 500GB SSD and a caddy adapter costs you only 680 euros. And if you need another SSD with 500GB, they will only cost you somewhere around 60 euros. This means the cheapest way to record 4K fine with the EOS R5, which I'm by the way recording on right now, is externally. By the way, if you want one of my sweet custom fit ninja SSD caddies you can see here, you can order them through the Etsy link in the description. And since we're already talking about accessories, let's check out the ones you need for the external recording to work. Obviously, we will need a Canon EOS R5 or an R6, and an Atomos Ninja 5. Now let's talk about the accessories for the Ninja 5. First up, a supported SSD for the Atomos Ninja 5. I'm using self-printed caddies, so I shortened the SSD so they perfectly fit the Atomos Ninja without sticking out in the back. Next up is the power supply. You either use a battery or the Atomos power adapter. Depending on the brightness of your display, a 10k milliamp battery like this one here will last you somewhere around 3 to 4 hours. The power adapter of course can power the Atomos indefinitely. If you're on the go, you can record with an LPE6 battery, which will give you somewhere between 1 to 1.5 one hours of recording time, but if you want to record for a longer period of time, you will need a dummy battery. These will cost you somewhere between 30 to 35 bucks. Now let me give you a rundown of the settings you need to focus on in the Ninja 5 and the EOS R5. Let's begin with the proper settings for the Atomos Ninja 5. Once you fired up your Ninja, head over to the input settings. Now here comes one of the most important parts I'm going to show you today and this applies to all camera manufacturers, not only Canon. Normally if you would record in a log style format, you would enable log HDR recording, select your camera brand, then select the log style you are recording in and then select the gamut you prefer. This now is no longer necessary. In order to record the same exact footage that you are recording internally within your camera, disable the log HDR setting which then will reveal a legalized switch. If you ever recorded log footage with the Atomos Ninja 5, you probably noticed that your external footage was more contrasty than the one recorded within your camera. This has something to do with how the Atomos handles the camera signal and this affects not only Canon cameras but every other camera brand out there. 
This effect can be counteracted thanks to the newly implemented legalize option. If you want to know all the technical details, Gerald and Don made a great video about this topic, so I will link it here. Let me now show you what the legalize option does to your footage. On the left you can see the internal image of the Canon EOS R and on the right the one from the Atomos Ninja 5 with full range enabled. If you take a closer look at the vector scope and the RGB parade you will notice that they have differences. If I now enable legalize the images look identical to the naked eye. You can see in the vector scope that there are still some differences but they are not severe. Once I re-enable the full range you can see that the image is way more contrasty and more likely to clip which in the end will result in less image information. Remember? This setting is essential if you are recording in log. If you are not recording in log, switch both of those switches off and you are good to go. Also this applies to every camera manufacturer out there, no matter it's Canon, Nikon, Sony, you name it. Here is another detailed view of the vector scope and the RGB parade. You can see that there are slight deviations between the R5's internal recording and the external Atomos legalized recording. These deviations are so small that in most cases the naked eye cannot see them and if you color grade your footage later it will be way easier to use the same exact method if you are recording internally and externally. So this will make your whole process way easier if you ever now and then switch between the internal and externally recorded footage. By the way this whole thing only affects Final Cut and Premiere Pro users cause the DaVinci Resolve users can switch between data levels and therefore compensate for a different kind of recording. Now let's focus on the R5 recording settings. In the shooting settings head over to menu number 3 and there select the Canon Log settings. Make sure that Canon Log is turned on. If you turn on view assist it will show you a normalized image on the tilty flippy screen in the back of the camera and it will neither interfere with the external or internal recording in terms of color profile, bitrate or quality. Under color matrix I would highly recommend you to go with neutral cause it will give you a flatter image which then makes your footage easier to grade. Now let's head back to shooting menu number 1. Now enter movie recording quality, select 4K HQ mode and enable it. Thanks to 4K Fine you get access to the highest available recording quality aside from 8K in the R5 and that's cause 4K Fine is the result of a 5.5K downsampled image. For the last and most important setting we go back to shooting menu number 1 and head over all the way to shooting menu number 8. Here you can find a setting called overheat control. Make sure that this setting is turned off, otherwise the quality of your external recording will suffer significantly. If you forget to turn it off and you plug in an HDMI device, even the camera will prompt you with a message saying if overheat control is on, HDMI output in standby may differ. In this comparison you can see how big the difference between overheat control turned off and on is. Basically your recording quality will revert back to regular 4K. And just to show you the truth, on the left you see a 4K fine image and on the right a regular 4K image. Both of them are zoomed 200% and just look how much more information is stored in a 4K fine image. Don't get me wrong, the 4K image is still a very decent image and it's way better than the recording from the EOS R. But still if you have the option to go with 4K fine, I would always choose 4K fine. And to prove it to you, can you tell which of these two images is 4K and which is 4K fine? Did you get it right? Let me know down below. Canon didn't do the best job documenting how to actually trigger the external recording, so let's talk about your options. Recording with the EOS R was super straightforward. If you did set your Canon log settings to 10-bit and you hit your record button on the camera, it did trigger automatically the external recording on the Atomos Ninja 5. It didn't matter whether an SD card was inserted or not. With the EOS R5 you can still trigger external recordings with the record button, but the moment you remove the CF Express card, especially if you have 4K Fine enabled, you are no longer able to trigger the external recording through the record button. This in my opinion is a shame, there should be an option where you still can trigger the recording through HDMI on an external recorder if you don't have a CF Express card present. 
However, you can still record 4K fine, you just have to trigger the recording within the Atomos itself, so just tap on the record button on the bottom left corner. I would love to see Canon implement a record externally option where you can automatically trigger the external recording without the need of a CF Express card being present. Considering all the recording options and capabilities the EOS R5 now has to offer, I think there's no reason for anybody to hold back on it any longer. Canon already proved that they are going to increase recording and thermal recovery times with their latest firmware update, and as far as we know, it will only get better from here on. So if you were worrying about about the so-called overheating issues, in my opinion there is no issue. It's just an obstacle you can face under certain circumstances and by now you have multiple ways to avoid the problem in itself. With that said, if you found today's tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and if you have any questions surrounding the new EOS R5, you can find me in the comments. With that said, thank you for watching and I see you in the next one. Peace.